it is often said in reefing there are no magic potions you can add to your tank to make an instant difference. And while that is still true of Kalkwasa, Kalk is the closest thing I've come across to a magic potion. So today I'll show you the cheapest, easiest and best way to add Kalkwasa to your aquarium. First though, what is Kalkwasa and why might you want to use it? As you add corals to your saltwater aquarium, they will uptake calcium and alkalinity from the water, so you'll need to replace that. The most popular way to do so is using so-called two-part dosing solutions like Red Sea Foundations or Tropic Marine Ultra Reef, and I've made a simple guide to dosing which I'll link at the top of the screen. Calquasa is the common term for what science boffs call calcium hydroxide, so it adds calcium to your tank which of course increases your calcium levels, and the hydroxide mixes with CO2 in your tank to create alkalinity. So quite simply, Calquasa is an all-in-one dosing solution that will replace the calcium and alkalinity your corals need to grow. But it also has two significant benefits over normal two-part dosing solutions. Firstly, it is much cheaper than two-part dosing. The two-part I use is ATI Essentials Plus, which was costing me around £10 per month, whereas the Seachem Calquasser I now use costs £3.30 per month for the equivalent amount. And if you buy Calquasser in bulk from a chemical company like APC instead of a reefing company like Seachem, it can cost as little as £7 a month. And yes, you heard that right, that's seven pence per month for Calquasa or 10 pounds per month for two-part dosing. But more importantly, Calquasa is also a high pH solution. So it will increase the pH in your aquarium, which is better for the health of your corals and will make them grow much faster. The pH on natural reefs in the wild sits at around 8.3 all day every day, whereas CO2 from our fish and us mouth breathers builds up in our homes and suppresses the pH of our aquariums. Before I started dosing Calquasa, my pH level was as low as 7.65, which is a potentially harmful level for corals, whereas now it never drops below 8.2, and my corals are using three times as much calcium and alkalinity as they were the week before I started dosing Calquasa, so they are growing much much, much faster. And if that's not enough, Calquasa also helps to reduce pesky phosphate levels in your reef tank. So now let's move on to how to dose the stuff. There are a few ways you can do it, but the simplest way is to mix Calquasa powder with RODI water that you either filter yourself with an RODI filter or buy from your local fish shop. To mix it correctly, you need to add 1.5 grams of calc powder per litre of water. Water can't hold more Calquasa than that, so if you add two grams of calc powder to a litre of RODI, the excess half a gram will just settle out at the bottom of your container and won't make the Calquasa solution any more or less potent. So it's basically foolproof as it's not possible to add too much powder. You can use any food safe container to hold your Calquasa mix, so just look for the LDPE or HDPE logos on whatever container you buy. Brute trash cans are very popular for this purpose, but I bought bespoke 95 and 25 litre containers for my two tanks because they fit well in the spaces I have and last ages between refills. When it comes to choosing the right size container for you, bigger is of course more convenient because you'll have to fill it up less often. On my 150 litre water box tank, I currently dose half a litre of Calquasa per day, so my 25 litre container currently lasts around 50 days before it needs topping up and it'll still last 25 days when my alkalinity uptake doubles as I buy more corals to feed my addiction. Now I use this tank to store frags from my main tank before I sell them, so I'd describe it as moderately stocked with mostly small SPS frags, plus a couple of high alkalinity demand things like a Durasa clam, a couple of Montipora, along with a few medium sized LPS corals. On my main 450 litre SPS dominated tank, I currently dose 3.2 litres of Calquasa per day. So this 95 litre container lasts around 30 days before it needs topping up and I'd class this tank as very high demand with numerous established SPS colonies. But ultimately, whatever stage your tank is at, because Calquasa isn't high concentration, you'll probably need a reasonably big container one way or the other. It's no hardship topping up every two weeks, although personally I'm a lazy reefer, so I don't think I'd want to be topping up much more frequently than that. Now, if you don't have space for a large container, you can instead use a Calquasa stirrer, which is much, much smaller, and I'll do a second video on Calquasa explaining how they work. The only other requirement for a container though is that it must have a lid. If you don't have a lid, the Calquasa will be exposed to CO2 in the air, which can reduce its pH potency. And to avoid creating a vacuum, just make sure the lid is QT, not FT. That's quite tight, not, well, you know. 
And finally on mixing, because Kalkwasa is a high pH solution, you need to apply a little common sense when handling it. The tub will usually have a warning saying you don't want to get too much of it in your eyes or your lungs, so just be sensible with it. And in the words of Walter White, Chemistry must be respected. You should add calc powder to water and not the other way around. And it must be RODI water, not tap water, and definitely not salt water. It of course helps if you know how much water you're working with, so you'll need to measure the capacity of your container the first time you fill it up. Because containers expand when full, the best way to do so is use a measuring jug to fill it in the first place. Then simply make a note of how much water it holds. You then measure out the calc powder to add to the water. You need 1.5 grams of calc per litre of water, so for this 25 litre container, I'll add 37.5 grams of calc. The exact amount doesn't really matter though, so I tend to aim for around 40 grams or more. Anything less than 1.5 grams per litre will mean your calc solution is slightly less potent. And of course, anything above 1.5 grams won't dissolve in water and will just settle out at the bottom of your container. And because Kalkwasa is so cheap, it really doesn't matter if you waste a few grams. You will of course need to stir the mix to dissolve it, and I use this acrylic rolling pin that looks a lot more like a marital aid than I'd like. I stir the mixture for about 30 seconds or so, but try not to overthink how much you need to stir it. You'll always end up with some undissolved powder at the bottom and stirring like crazy for several minutes, or worse still, mixing it with a power head won't actually help, and if anything, it will just introduce CO2 into your calc mix, which as I said earlier, can reduce the pH potency. Once you've stirred it up, pop the lid back on and let it settle for half an hour to an hour before you start dosing it to your tank. Now the process of actually adding calc to your tank is similar to dosing two-part with one key difference. With two-part, you tend to add small amounts several times per day, so maybe five or 10 milliliters on the hour every hour. But with Calcwasa, it's better to set your dosing pump to drip it continuously throughout the day. Doing so will avoid any unwanted pH spikes you might get if you add your daily dose in larger installments or even worse all at once. Now not all dosing pumps are rated for continuous duty. I use the Ecotech Versa and I also consider the DDP1 STP as well as the Kamoa FX STP. The Neptune DOS will do the job too and there are probably others I've missed so just check before you buy. You then place the outlet of your dosing tube above the highest flow area of your sump so the calc can dissolve instantly. And on my main tank that's in the return chamber. The skimmer in the previous chamber does generate a little water movement, but the flow is still pretty gentle there. It's perfectly adequate though, and does the job just fine. And in my water box, I've set it so it goes straight into the overflow box and down the pipes into the sump. You can add a power head to your sump to create high flow if it's very still, but that's the sort of thing you can easily overthink, so try not to sweat it too much. And if you don't have a sump, you can just put the dosing outlet by a power head. As with any kind of dosing, you'll need to test your alkalinity before you start to see how much you need to add. So test your alkalinity at the same time point a few days in a row. If the level isn't dropping, you don't need to start dosing calc, or two part for that matter. But if it is dropping, just start slow. A decent point is one milliliter of calc for every liter of water your salt water tank holds. So if you have a 100 liter tank, start by adding 100 milliliters of calc per day, Test your alkalinity at the same time the next day and increase or decrease your dose until your alkalinity stays roughly the same. And if you're switching to Kalkwasser from two part dosing, I'd use the same method. So add one milliliter of Kalkwasser for every liter of salt water your tank holds, but don't increase your two part dosing, then see if your alkalinity increases. If it does, decrease your two part dosing by 10%, then rinse and repeat. Or if you prefer to be more accurate, there are online calculators available. And the guide of one milliliter of Kalkwasa for every liter of salt water your aquarium holds is probably a better guide if you've already got 10 or 15 corals in your tank. So if you have fewer corals, dose half as much Kalkwasa or maybe even less. As with every method of dosing, it might take a couple of weeks to get this dialed in. And as with everything in reefing, you won't regret going too slowly, but you will regret going too fast. And I've only mentioned testing alkalinity because in theory, you shouldn't need to test calcium. Kalkwasa adds alkalinity and calcium in the correct ratio to your tank. So in theory, just testing out should be fine, but it wouldn't hurt to test calcium too.
And apart from calcium and alkalinity, a pH probe to continuously measure your pH is useful to have. It'll give you the data that will show your tank's pH increasing, and it will warn you if your pH spikes for whatever reason, for example, if your calc acidosa gets stuck in the on position. But that's an extremely rare occurrence, so a pH probe is non-essential in my opinion, and I've recently turned both of my pH probes off because I can never be bothered to calibrate them. And if you want to know what your pH is doing but can't justify the expense of a pH monitor, simply test manually once in the evening at the point at which your lights start to ramp down, and once in the morning, an hour or two after your lights come on. That will give you the peak and trough of your pH, so you'll have a better idea of what's happening in your tank. Now there is a limitation to Kalkwasa in that you can only add as much of the stuff as you lose fresh water to evaporation each day. So on my main tank, because I only lose three and a half liters to evaporation per day, I also have to add two part dosing solutions, albeit a little bit less than I would otherwise. But the limit is fairly high, and on my second tank, I lose one and a half liters to evaporation each day, but I'm only currently dosing half a liter of Kalkwasa. So I've got room for three times as much coral before I need to start adding two part as well. And if you ever reach that stage, you can just supplement the calc with Tropic Marin Alpha Reef, which does everything in a single bottle, so you'll only need one extra dosing pump. Now there are a few other things that are worth knowing, so I'll make a separate video on everything you need to know about Calcwasser, but this really is all you need to get started. Calc is cheap, easy to use, and does wonders for your pH, which will directly benefit your corals. So if you're not dosing Calcwasser, do you even reef bro? If you've got any questions about calc then let me know in the comment section below and if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week and until next time happy reaping.